you probably clicked on this video because you are familiar with my images here on DeviantArt, or maybe because you are scanning the web for anything you can use to enhance your color correction. I'm here to help, and this video is the starter to many Photoshop tutorials to come. Welcome to my primer tutorial, friends. This tutorial will help get you up to speed with the tools I use most frequently on Photoshop. So first I'm going to go up and show you image section and adjustments and the first tool I'm going to show you is brightness and contrast. With this tool you can use brightness to increase the overall light in the image. Um, as you can see it will bring up your lights and your midtones and also your darks but usually your darks go up a little slower than the rest and with contrast you can bring up your lights and your darks to put more emphasis on the shadows in the image. You can also decrease the contrast to have the opposite effect and make things blend a little better. So canceling that and going up and into adjustments again now let's take a look at levels. With the mid-level selector right here. You can slide it to move your midtones. You can slide the one on the end to move your darks and the one on the other end to move your brights up and down. These are unlike brightness and contrast, you have a little more control. And going down to my history bar down here in the corner and I'm going to move back up to my open. For those of you new to Photoshop, your history bar is a great tool for erasing past uh, effects. So now curves, one of my favorites, will move everything at once but incrementally. So when I move this line up and down, you can create gra more gradual effects, which look nicer and you can also add extra points to change the lighting effects between those effects. But curves is for gradual change. And I don't use exposure very often, but it's essentially like changing your camera settings a little bit, I mean as much as you can in post. And so you have several options to increase or decrease your light settings. So while those last four sections kind of cover your lights and darks and just neutral tones, we're now going to go into the color section. And first we're going to take a look at hue and saturation. So with hue and saturation, obviously it deals with overall tones, but you also can go in and select certain tones. So here you can see with master changes, I was just moving it back and forth to show you how saturation will change. You can also go in and select certain colors, like I just went in and selected green, and now you can slide up and down to only affect the color saturation and lightness or darkness of green. From there you can also change hue and saturation. I just went back into master, and master kind of changes all your colors at once, and right now I was playing with the hue bar, and and see how these different bars affect your lighting. So, done with that. Let's go up and we'll look at another color section. Color balance. Color balance has your opposites for digital color shifting. So you have your cyan versus red, magenta versus green, and yellow versus blue. And you can move these bars back and forth to get more of one and less of the other. This is great for fast color editing. I usually use it near the end of my edits because it 
is a great tool for just doing minor little shifts once I've kind of gotten things where I, I really want them. So you can see those shifts between yellows and blues, magentas and greens. And the next tool is we're going to go all the way down to selective color. This is one of my favorite tools and one of the ones I use most frequently. There's a lot of different ways to do editing in Photoshop, especially for color correction. And it's just about kind of finding the tools you like the most, which the ones that make the most sense to you. So in this one, you have control over your six different colors and your three neutrals. So since there's green in this image, I'm going to mess with the greens to kind of show you how you can shift those around. Something I do a lot with forest pictures is often they start quite neutral and greens are a great way to start pumping color into the image. So here you can see me working with whites and adding just a touch of yellow into the background colors. Now you can go in, I'm going in with neutrals to add a little more yellow. And here in the darks, I'm going to add just a touch of blue and a touch of magenta to add some contrast to that yellow and green background. So that's just a really quick color edit I can do in Selective Color. And you'll see me use this tool a lot. It's one of my favorite in Photoshop. And reds can also be used, yellows as well, for shifting skin tones because there usually aren't as many reds and yellows in backgrounds. So this is a tool I don't use as often. It's shadows and highlights, but sometimes if I'm dealing with some really dark shadows, it's a good tool to use. And as you can see, you've got your shadows, highlights, and your mid-tone sections here and you can shift specific sections of light between those to create more HDR effects. So those are tools I use frequently in the image section. Now in the filters here are just a couple you'll see me use occasionally. I'm not going to go into depth with them but blur sharpness and noise reduction are ones that I will frequently use to adjust image quality. So now that I'm done with the bars up there, tools that I use frequently are in this toolbar on the side. And the first one I'm going to show you is the one I have selected, um, the healing brush. Up at the top you can see three different options. The ones I use most frequently is content aware and proximity match. So as you can see I just deleted some leaves there on the side using that brush and that's what I'll do frequently with the healing brush is go through and touch up skin blemishes and sometimes also remove objects from the background. It's also great for spot removal for dust you have on your lenses. And now I'm going to show you guys the some of the tools I use the most. And those are dodge and burn tools. And occasionally I'll also use the saturation or desaturation sponge tool. So this first one is your burn tool and up at the top there you can see the spot where you can change the size of your brush. You can also change whether it's a solid brush or a softer brush. You can also change whether you are doing um, lights, midtones, or shadows. And also you can change 
how opaque your brush is. When I'm doing editing work on mine, I prefer to use opacity at 10 or below just for keeping control over how much of an effect I'm having on my image at a time. Some people get around this problem by using layers frequently, and it's not something I've really gotten into in my editing as much. I mean, I will use layers occasionally for effects, but with my general brush uses, I just use low densities of color. And now we'll take a look at the dodge tool. And here you can see me quickly making an effect on my face and the image. Just a quick dodge on the mid-tones to just bring in a little more light and make it a little more prominent. And that's often what I use the dodge tool for, is kind of creating a focus in the image. Um, I use dodge and burn very much like vignettes to make personal movements throughout the image with vignetting. So now we're looking at the sponge tool, and the sponge tool is what you can use to saturate or desaturate colors within the image. So often if I have an area in the image where the color seems just a little too hot, I will go through and remove a little bit of that color, or if I feel like I could add a little more intensity to the color, I will go through and add more saturation. And I'm going to show you guys that right now with some heavier saturation here. So see those greens back there? I'm going to make them really pump and brighten up for a sec. So that's the effect of using your saturation brush. You can just add more color and more color density into an area versus neutrals. So the last brush I'm showing you is just called the brush. It's for color. Any color you can pick off of your color palettes can be used in this. Often I use it to add color to hair or even just colored vignettes around images or objects just for more ambiance. So you can see me drawing in here and creating spots of color throughout the image. This is great if you really want to just kind of add a little more atmosphere and this is something I'll frequently do in images is use my brush to just brush in a little color here and there to make it kind of come to life a little more. So, here's one area you want to know about. Here you can get windows, and as I'm showing you the history brush window right there, and that is great, great tool. You should have it open all the time while you're using Photoshop so you can backtrack and retrack and use your history brush as well, which I'll show you later in edits to come. And that should do it. So. Soon I will have some edits showing up on here, and I hope you guys enjoy them. You're going to learn about a whole bunch of other tools that I didn't even mention in this, but I hope this gives you guys a great starter for knowing what to look for when I start an edit. Alright, talk to you guys later.